Hello, today we're going to be making gochujang chicken. Gochujang is a Korean chili paste and it's a little spicy, but the way it is done with this recipe, it's not that bad. You'll get a little bit of spice, but nothing that's going to make it difficult to eat. Now, this recipe is from a young lady. Um, Bon Appetit, her name is Molly Baz, B-A-Z, and I'm not trying to take any credit or make any major changes. What I'm trying to do here is to see whether her gochujang chicken will make a good freezer meal. So during this video, I'm going to be prepping one chicken for dinner tonight and one chicken to go in the freezer. And as you've already noticed, I took a paper towel and I dried off the chicken, the top and the bottom, and I got the pan because it's important to dry off any excess moisture. Because once you put the chicken in the oven, that moisture is going to stop it from browning. And once I've done that, I salted and peppered it. What she does, which I never thought of before, was she actually put salt and pepper within the cavity of the chicken. She was thinking in terms of actually taking care of the chicken from the inside out. Uh, I also took the neck off. I don't use it in my house other than possibly for chicken stock or to treat the pooch. Now, gochujang is normally a paste. And as you can see, I'm really not working with a paste. I couldn't find gochujang paste. I had to deal with a gochujang gluten-free variety. It still worked out okay, so there's no worries there. Now, as I mentioned, I'm doing double the amount, so you're seeing a lot of gochujang going in here. But for you, if you're just doing one chicken, you only need five tablespoons. And I'm going to push it and push it and push it till I get it all out. Now, gochujang paste is a paste, and it might be a little difficult to work with. So once you have your gochujang in your bowl, you're going to take a quarter cup of oil and you're going to whisk it into your gochujang. And that's what you're going to see here. Of course, I'm doing a little more than a quarter cup. I think I have a half cup. And I'm slowly drizzling it in. You don't want to plop it in. You want it to slowly drizzle in. So this way you can blend it all together really well. And once you have it whisked in well, then comes the next part. And that's the garlic cloves. And if you have the opportunity to go to Costco, they have this big old bag of peeled garlic cloves from California. I purchased that and absolutely love it. I keep it in my freezer, which you can see I'm kind of having a little hard time pushing it through my garlic press. But she takes three garlic cloves and minces them up and puts them within the gochujang and mixes them in. I'm using six garlic cloves because I'm doubling the amount. And I'm using a garlic press, which it gets the job done, maybe a little thicker, but it still worked out in the end. Now, after that's in, you're going to be including ginger. Now, don't use powdered ginger. It's not going to come out very well. What you're going to want is ginger root. And it's a bizarre little knobby thing that you'll see in the produce section. It has a papery skin, and you can get that skin off really easy by just using the back of your spoon and rubbing it against the ginger. Now, as far as this recipe here, it requires a half an inch of ginger root. Now, that's, uh, you know, that's not supposed to be perfect. There's no way you can accurately do just a half inch because as you look at ginger root it's all knobby and everything so do your best now for me i'm doing more than that because i have double the amount that i'm working with 
and it was fun grating all that ginger. But once you have it, go ahead and mix it in, and then you come to your next step. Your next step actually has to do with garlic. Now, this is the garlic that goes inside your bird and in the pan. What she does is she takes two full heads of garlic, she cuts them in half, puts one in the cavity, and she puts the other one in the pan. Now, I don't have two, two heads of garlic, but what I do have are a bunch of cloves. So I guess the number of cloves, and I put a handful within the bird and a bunch within the pan. Now, when she puts the head of garlic within the bird and within the pan, she doesn't peel it. She just kind of cuts one end off, puts it in the bird, puts it in the pan. And then as it cooks, now this actual meal is going to be cooking for three hours, that garlic is going to be delicious. Absolutely delicious. So next thing you see that I'm doing here with my pastry brush, it looks like it's a child's toy, but I actually got it out of Walmart, the cooking section, and I'm covering my chicken cover everything. Go underneath the arms, the wings, everything. Make sure you do it really well. And once I finish this, what you're going to see me do is drag the other chicken out. So I cover it first. Now, you're going to be covering the chickens, but you're also going to be cover, um, doing some potatoes. So you want to make sure that the Chickens are covered first because that's really where the meat is. Well, that is where the meat is, but that's where it's going to really be good. And once you're done covering the chicken, then you can work on the potatoes. Now, as far as the size of the potatoes, what I did was I got a bag of those small little baby potatoes, and that worked out really well. If you don't want to do that, but you're going to have to cut it fairly small, about the size of the baby potatoes, so this way it cooks well. And what you're going to be doing is putting the potatoes within the gojujang, covering the potato and dropping it within the pan. You do not want any of the potatoes to be underneath the chicken. Because if it's underneath the chicken, it's not going to cook well. So you'll see me putting in the potatoes here. Then I'll move that out of the way. And I'll be dumping a bunch of potatoes on the chicken. That's going to be my freezer meal. Now one thing I didn't tell you is how to cook this. Molly does on her video. What you'll do is you'll put this in your oven at 300 and you're going to cook it for about three hours now is it absolutely three hours well it depends on your oven if you think it's done and you have a thermometer go ahead and get your thermometer and check the breast as long as you're not next to a bone the temperature should be about 160 degrees and then check the legs that should be about 175. It can be a little lower when you pull the chicken out because what happens, there's like a cook over time. You'll have the pan out, the pan's still going to be hot, and you really do need to let the chicken sit for 10 or 15 minutes so the juices redistribute. Because if you don't and you cut into the chicken, all the juices just kind of flop out, which really is disappointing and it makes for a dry chicken. Once it is done, and I did fail to give you a picture of the end result, but if you look at Molly's video, she has one. Once it's done, you're going to pull the chicken out of the pan and concentrate on the potatoes. You're going to take a couple of lime and squeeze it around the potatoes. What that does is kind of lifts the flavor of the potatoes and drizzle a small amount of honey all over them. 
I think Molly goes through and sort of smushes the potatoes a little bit, but I didn't really find that necessary. So here you see me making the bags for my chicken. Now, as far as putting a chicken in a one gallon bag, it was a tight fit. And some of the goju zhang actually seem to sort of kind of wipe away, but it still worked out. So what I would tell you is if you want to do this as a freezer meal, get yourself a two gallon bag. They do make them. That's going to give you more than enough room and it won't have the goju zhang all over the place. Now, I guess I should tell you whether or not this worked out. Yes, it worked out wonderfully. I took the chicken out, I defrosted it, plopped it in a pan, and I cooked it. And I had dinner. So by doing the work or doing two of them at once, I had two dinners and I only had to take care of it once. It was absolutely wonderful. So as I've been saying, if you like what you see, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you like what I've been doing and you want to see more of the videos as I do them, go ahead and like the channel. I really do appreciate your time and it's very important to me that I give you quality videos. So with all that being said, I guess all I have left to say is bye bye till the next video.